Hello, hello, hello. My name is Chris Reese. I am one of the subject matter experts at Award Solutions. I welcome you to LTE University. Today we're going to spend a few minutes talking about an overview of GTP, the GPRS Tunneling Protocol. What I want to start off with is just a brief kind of history of the GPRS Tunneling Protocol. And I don't want to take us all the way back to its initial beginnings in uh, GPRS and Edge, but I do want to focus a little bit of how it was used in UMTS, how it's going to be used in LTE, and what that difference is between the two. So it was originally used in GPRS and UMTS to tunnel packets through the network to get to the mobile. Specifically, we would take packets from the GGSN, the GPRS, uh, the Gateway GPRS support node, send them to the SGSN, the serving GPRS support node, and then take them to the RNC, the radio network controller. The RNC would convert it into radio and send it to our mobile. So these two, these two links here were GTP-based links. Now, as we get into LTE, what we start to see is we start to see that they, in a lot of the documentation, they say that we're, we're still using GTP. We're, we're still doing GTP in the same way. And that has been bugging me for a while up until this latest release where I was really able to start to see that yeah, we're using the same GTP concepts, but we're actually using a new flavor of GTP. Let me show you what I mean. When we're setting up our, our tunnels, our GPRS tunnels that we have as part of GTP, we're setting these tunnels up and these tunnels are going to be associated with PDP context, packet data protocol contexts. Now, these PDP context um, are used to, to get the data from the internet or whatever our service network is down to the mobile. As we start to look at LTE, what we start to see is we start to see that we still are going to have that same concept of having to tunnel the packets through the network. So we're going to have whatever our, our external network is, and that's going to connect to a PDN gateway or a P gateway, to a serving gateway or an S gateway, and then to our enhanced node B and our enhanced node B will convert it to, to radio waves and send it over the air to the mobile. On these two links, we're still going to use GTP. Now here's where the struggle has come in for me. We're not dealing with mapping a tunnel to a PDP context anymore. We're mapping it to a bearer. And we call these either a default bearer or a dedicated bearer. And so there's signaling that changes in there. there. There's different types of information we need to communicate that aren't the same as a PDP context. And in later one of these sessions, we'll talk about the details of those differences. But for right now, um, even just that difference in terminology means we need to have some change in the way that we're communicating this information. Now, what has happened is we are still using this GTP concept, but they've come up with a new flavor of the protocol. So when I start to look at this link here, which is, either, is the S5 or the S8 interface, depending on the specific configuration we have in our network, this is what the standards are starting to refer to as GTP version 2 control plane and GTP version 1 user plane. This GTP version 2 is the, is the interesting bit. So 
what we now see that we have is we have, from a GTP perspective, we have a control plane and we have a user plane. GTP version, let me do it this way, GTP version 2 for the control plane and GTP version 1 for the user plane, this is what we're going to use for LTE. So we're going to have this new flavor of GTP version 2. Now, it's defined in a different spec, and unfortunately, as of yet, the specs aren't referring to each other really well. It took me a little while to find this. But the specification for this is 29.274, where the user plane is going to be 29.281. Now, if we look at what we had in UMTS, we had control plane version 1 and user plane version 1. Well, the control plane version 1 was defined in 29060. Now, I don't want to give you the impression that we're dealing with something that's radically different here. What we're dealing with is something that we're changing the language a bit so that we can communicate some of this new information. Now, does that mean I can reuse what I had? No, it would be a new protocol. It would have some change that that design is going to, to sort. But for practical purpose, it's basically a very, very similar protocol. One thing that we need to keep in mind, and this is another piece of this that I think is really important, is as we start to deal with interoperability between LTE and UMTS, I start my, an LTE service, I drive out of LTE coverage, and I, I need to do a handover into UMTS, we're going to start to see nodes that need to support both protocols. Specifically, as we start to look at some nodes like an MME, Okay, the mobility management entity. It will need to support on an interface that's referred to as the S3 interface, GTP, GTP version 1, control plane. And it's going to also need to support to the serving gateway on the S11 interface, GTP version 2 control plane. So now we're starting to increase some of the complexity. Really what I want you to take away from this discussion is, is that we do have this new flavor of GTP and the way the standards are reading right now they are implying that GTP just kind of carries through and I don't want you to get the impression that it does. I don't want you to get the impression that no change has happened. Well that's at least an introduction to GTP. My name is Chris Reese, um, part of Award Solutions, part of LTE University. If you have questions or anything that you would like to know a little bit more about, please go to the, the LTE University forums and post a question, uh, put a comment in there. We'd love to hear from you. If there's any specific topic you want to talk about, we'd love to dialogue with you a little bit about it. I thank you very much for your time, and I look for you again on LTE University. Take care and have a happy new year.